October the 4th, 2024. I am Brett Birdie from AppsInLaw.com. And this is Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD. Hey, Brett. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> you know, I, I, we just got to tell people, we actually just saw each other a couple of days ago. I had the ability to be in New Orleans with my wife this week, and it was just great to sit down and say hello. And we actually had fantastic weather in New Orleans, which I'm glad about <laughs> because – I know since we've been doing this, Jeff, a couple of times, you've had to leave the city because of hurricanes. Unfortunately. And we want to give a special shout out to all the people that have been affected by Hurricane Helene. Is it Helene? Helene? Mm -hmm. Um, that has been a terrible tragedy. I've just seen the even the the numbers of people affected and being injured, uh, just going up, and it is a terrible tragedy tragedy that has happened. But I thought we could at least do something to maybe help people understand that there is a way that potentially you could continue to communicate with loved ones or people that may have been affected by Hurricane Helene that has been happening even as long as this. You had a great little write up in your post today, Jeff. That. While a lot of the cell towers may not be functioning, I think one report from NBC was like fewer than 10% of cell sites are fully functioning. If people have an iPhone Pro 15 or 16, they have the ability to potentially message through satellite functioning. We've been talking about this for a while, and I just thought that it was great. I'm glad that you mentioned this because it really is an ex excellent way that potentially people could continue to communicate with people that may not even have another way to communicate these days. Yeah, in fact, as you and I were discussing just before you hit record, you know, we this is we always talk, talk about like a where yet segment on the podcast, and which yes. is sometimes funny stories and sometimes something being stolen. But <clears throat> here's a very serious where yet at. You know, where are yeah. you in communicating? Um, I tell you, um, Brett, have you ever? I'm just curious. You know, being in Ohio where you are, have you ever been in a situation where you had just no power and no communication? Have you lived through we, that before? Yeah, a little you bit. Have. You know, we don't have hurricanes up here at Ohio. Right. We do have some tornadoes and some very bad mm -hmm. storms that have come up. But fortunately, we've never, like, lost power for maybe more than, like, a day at the very most. Yeah. And it seems like we've always been able to have some access to Internet co connectivity and somehow. So it's it's just never been for, like, multiple days, which obviously what yeah. you guys have experienced. But even the fact – are but Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the fact that you've had your experience with it for whatever reasons, too, just shows that it, it really can be sort of a universal thing. Um, you know, when Absolutely. I've been in this situation after hurricanes, and like I said, the biggest one for us recently, you know, historically, of course, was Hurricane Katrina. But recently it was Hurricane yeah. Ida just yeah. a few years ago. And it's tough because, you know, you have no power. You have no idea when power is coming back. For Hurricane Ida, I think that our house was out of power for like two weeks or something like that, which oh, was ridiculous. Goodness. We ended up leaving town. And um, and then you have you know, no power, of course, means you have no Internet, but it also is often accompanied by the fact that the cell phone tires, their batteries die after a while. Sometimes if it's like a hurricane or a tornado, the towers themselves are damaged. And so communication is just really really difficult um way back in hurricane katrina uh, which was in 2005 that was the first time that a lot of people that i knew who lived in the new orleans area learned about texting in the first place it seems silly because we all text message without even thinking about it nowadays but back in 2005 most people did not text that much. I remember that was the days when you had to like press, you know, 444-66-888 right. to get right. letters out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we learned how to do so because right. after Katrina, when you could not call people on the cell phones, it was you could never get a signal. Um, you could sometimes get text messages out. And that was important because after a disaster, you want to reach out to your parents. You want to reach out to your, your, your siblings and your friends. Family. You know, are you OK? Family. Do yeah. you need help? Yeah. Where are you? You know, maybe we can get together. Um, it's just communication becomes so, so very important. So after Ida, when I, you know, had such hard problem getting cell phone towers, and I shared this tip on iPhone JD that if you turn on airplane mode and then turn it off again, like you might be able to hook on to that oh, cell fix signal wow. for just 10 seconds, enough to get a message right. out. But oh my right. goodness, I would have loved to have had, and now I'm so glad I do for the future, this satellite capability, because the one thing that you can do after a hurricane is go outside. And usually, ironically, the weather after a hurricane is very nice. Um, it's just the right. devastation is everywhere. So right. you could go outside, you could you know, hold up your iPhone, communicate with people. The interesting thing about this story about Hurricane Helene is that you only gained 
disability, you could you could do 911 via satellite for what a year or yes. two now. But in right, terms of right. actually uh -huh. using text messages through satellite, that just came out in iOS 18, which of course iOS 18 just came out like what two weeks ago. I don't even think my wife has That's upgraded right. yet. And so they said that after Hurricane Helene, a lot of people had not upgraded, so they didn't have the feature. But one thing that I learned last night when I was putting together these articles is it's not just that you have to have iOS 18. Yeah. For someone to receive your messages via satellite on an iPhone, they have to have either iOS 18 right. or iOS 18 17.6, which is, you know, just the, right. the latest version of iOS 17. They basically have to have updated their OS, which seems odd to me because it seems to me, Brett, that like once you get your message out, and it's yeah. in the iMessage cloud. <laughs> Shouldn't it be yeah. able to be delivered to everybody, even people that were using much older phones? Mm. Um, yeah. And ironically, if you're using a text message through SMS, like a traditional text message, that will actually go to any Android phone, but only the newest iPhones. So, you know, there was a story that I didn't link to today, but I read last night that there was a man who he had the update. And he was trying to communicate with his family, and nobody in his family had updated their phones oh, except no. for his son. So his son had yeah, updated his yeah. phone. <laughs> so he was able to talk to the son, and the son then was then able to get the message out. So, um, you know, we're in sort of a transition period right now at the end of 2024. It's wonderful that some people were able to use it in the Carolinas and stuff like right. that. But, you right. know, for 2025 and 2026 and in the future, I think this is going to be an even bigger thing. And the last thing I'll say is, and I mentioned this at the end of the post, that when the satellite communication via text message came out, I was really thinking it was going to be for like, I know that you like to hike, Brett. And I think of you like being in the yeah. mountains or in the woods hiking. Right. I always thought to myself, that's what the feature is for. It's you're perfect. off the grid right. because you're in the middle of nature. But the irony is that even when you're in the middle of a city, um, a city that's you know devastated by, by a natural disaster, you can be off the grid in an urban area just because yeah. of the the yeah. you know issues and that's when satellite is just as important if you're within a metropolitan area as it is if you're out in the middle of the woods or in a mountain somewhere so that was really interesting to me you know i'm a huge fan of this we've talked about this several times even when it first started coming out with like being able to text 911 or emergency personnel because this isn't like full phone calls or anything but mm -mm. to me it's just always been sort of that science fiction dream of like why do i have to have I have to check the bars on whether or not I'm connected or not to to an area with you know are are is 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 my uh, my towers close by uh, mm -hmm. you know whether I'm on Verizon versus AT and T I'm like surely surely at some point we're gonna have enough satellites floating around in the atmosphere that there's gonna be enough connectivity there and it's just kind of interesting to see this progression because we just talked about this as well starlink you know is a company that's been around for a while i think this is mm -hmm. a elon musk company right? it is or, yeah or x or whatever and you and i both know people that are sort of nomadic workers like they work in their rvs around the country whatever but as long as they have a connection you know an open view of the sky they can work as if they were sitting in an urban area with a t1 connection you know with a with, to the internet and starlink mm -hmm. is doing this um i think i mentioned this just a week or so ago that united just announced that for all of their planes they're going to give free wi-fi via starlink i think is in 2025 sometime and that to me is sort of another indicator of like man like we're just continuing to be able to do more and more without sort of like the land the 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 the, the land challenge of having the towers mm -hmm. and you know the curvature of the earth and everything anyway so while this is devastating in this aspect of why people are being able to use it, I think it's fantastic. I, I, I think I see there was a tweet here that you were talking about that somebody said the new iOS feature came in handy. He was able to contact his son, but unfortunately oh, yeah. no one else in the family had the latest iOS installed. <laughs> so I don't know if the lesson there is to go ahead. You know, we tell people you don't have to immediately go from like 17 to 18 when it comes out. But hey, you know, sometimes it might be beneficial, especially on the Apple side. I feel like, you know, we, we are so much more confident today now being iOS 18 that we can say, go ahead and upgrade. But it's just fantastic that people have been able to find this. And I feel like that at some point in the near future, hopefully, very near future, that we will get to the point where we can do text messaging via satellite and it'll be like the same that it is today. We can send photos mm -hmm. and videos and everything. I know the technology has to creep a little bit further about that, but just, it was just really, um, 
uh, heartwarming to see that with all the devastation coming in this hurricane and just the flooding that has been happening and everything around the country too and there in the south that there is still a way that people can communicate and that's great yeah and communication is just so important after a disaster like this so can we just say now there is a i'll link to the support article here from from apple too the like how to do it uh we've talked about this before by the way there is a way that you can do a test run <laughs> And like yeah, to, I've done it before. You know, yeah, you can hold your hold your iPhone up in the sky, and you can just see how this works. I think it's built in. I I don't have the exact uh, um, uh, link here, but I'll make sure that we we link to it to where you can just go into the settings app, I believe, and you can say mm -hmm. test the satellite function, and you can at least just see what it looks like, so that if you are in a situation where it is, uh, you know, devastation, natural disaster, whatever the case may be, hiking and fell off the ledge, that you can at least know what it works and so that you have a little bit of a Good heads point. up on some of that. Yeah. Good point. Good stuff yeah. on there. Speaking of iOS 18, there was a little tiny incremental bump of an update. I went ahead and did my iPad and my iPhone today. This is 18.0.1. Just a few minor issues that were uh, updated here. Right, Jeff? No, no big thing. It, this isn't 18.1. <laughs> This is 18.0.1, right? Minor upgrade. We're looking for 18.1, hopefully maybe within the next week or so. Well, it's funny that you say it's a minor upgrade because, of course, you're correct. But for some people, it was very important. I actually got, okay. uh, an, an, I got an email from an attorney earlier this week who said, why is nobody talking about the fact that he has the latest iPad, just like I do, the M4? Okay. And when, I, when iPad OS 18 first came out, I updated my iPad, you know, pretty much the first day and it was fine. Right. But you may remember this was in the news two weeks ago that some people, when they updated the most recent iPads, it caused problems. And so Apple pulled oh. iOS 18 for an iPad. And so people oh, that had right. an M, okay. people that had an M4, which is the latest and greatest iPad, you know, people that were really into Apple technology, as you might imagine, if they did not upgrade successfully within that first day, they haven't been able to use Ooh. iPad uh, 18 for almost two weeks now. And he was saying, you know, this is aggravating yeah. that his phone yeah. is on the new system. His iPad is not. Nobody's talking about this. When is it going to come out? Uh. And I told him, I was like, gosh, I just assumed that when Apple pulled it, they would fix it pretty soon. Well, finally right. they have. Have. So it took, you know, it took about two weeks. So this okay, iOS 18.0.1 okay. and the similar updates for the watch and the iPad and everything else, it's fixing bugs like that one, which was okay, a big okay. one for certain members of the pop parts of the population and others. Um, but, you know, if you already had iPad um, 18 or iOS 18, you're not going to really notice much changes. It's some bug fixes. It's some, um, yeah. you know, fixing some security issues here and there. Um, so it's just minor fish, minor uh, things around the edges. Apple does this all the time. Um, if you have updated, you should definitely, you know, if you updated to 18, you should definitely mm -hmm. go to op to 18.0.1 because that's yeah. going to fix some of those things that they didn't discover until it first came out. And it's real quick, by the way. I mean, I think I, I just jumped on my phone and my iPad when I saw that you linked to it today, and maybe it took seven minutes, five minutes, something right. like that. It's very quick. Uh, just make sure, like, I remember my iPad was like 13% battery, <laughs> and it gives me the message, like, you have to at least be 20% battery in order for this upgrade to apply. So I always recommend that people plug it in or just have it plugged in and be charging when you are doing this update, but it'll go pretty quick. Yeah, don't we forget your watch article. too, because yeah. uh, they also oh, yeah, mentioned that right. there were some battery management issues with some of the Apple Watches. I had not noticed it myself, but you know, uh, battery life is always important for an Apple Watch unless you have an Ultra, and so you definitely want to get it, get it, get it on all your devices. So. I have to say, just quickly, I was drooling over your brand new Apple Watch. We talked about that last week, but what, since I got to see you in New Orleans this week, it was just really great to see that in person, which was uh, nice. When you do upgrade to iOS 18, hopefully many of you are. If you haven't yet, if you've been holding out, uh, I think upgrading from 17, whatever it was, to 18, not a problem. At this point, wouldn't you say, Jeff, like, go ahead, feel free to upgrade to 18, and then, of course, upgrade to 18.0.1 once you do that. Great article that you link to, though, 12 hidden iOS 18 features that nobody is talking about. I think I've seen some people talking about some of these, but a couple of these were really nice. Even the first one here, change app icons to widgets. I had not played around with that, where you can tap and hold on an icon, an app icon, and then you can switch it to a widget. 
Um, hmm. I, I, I hadn't had a time to play around with that, but that's just the first one in this list of 12 other ones that I thought were really good. So thanks for linking to this today. Yeah, How To Geek did a good job of coming up with some more obscure ones. Another one that I had not noticed, but and this sounds tiny, but I actually, it's it's a real thing that every once in a while you might have your set up your iPhone and then have a countdown timer so that you can get into a picture. Now, it, one great way to do oh, that is yeah. with your, your Apple Watch to remotely control the iPhone. But if you're not yes, doing that, like if you're that. just setting it like on like on the side of a counter and then jumping into a picture, it used to be that you could either have, it was I think a two second timer or three, three it was a three second timer, 10, which is right. not quite enough time to jump into the picture <laughs> or a 10 run. second timer, which, you know, I know 10 seconds doesn't sound very long, but it can seem like forever when you're, when you're standing, you're there, standing there. And, yeah. and so now <laughs> they have a five second option. And again, I, we laugh about this because it seems so minor, but I think five seconds is about the right amount of time. So, yeah, you know, right that, that was a nice just little right. treat. So that just tells you, even though there are some huge marquee features in iOS 18, like, you know, potentially saving your life with satellite communications. Yes. They also Hello. have these tiny, tiny, tiny little things that can just make quality of life a little bit better. So yeah. <laughs> Really good. And so I'll, I'll make sure that we link to uh, just those. I mean, some of these weren't the, the you know, the, the the highlight of anything, but it was just good to know because we're still fine. I mean, I'm still finding out so many things about iOS 18. We talked about this when we got together. It's like I hadn't had a chance to customize my control center. I haven't had a chance to, like, move some other things around. I mean, my phone, for the most part, looks almost exactly the way that it did with, with iOS 17. And it's just I haven't had time to change everything. So it's just neat to have some of these reminders of like, here are some things that we can actually go in and change. Now that's 18, 18.0.1. We've talked about the fact that 18.1 is going to come out pretty soon. And we are really excited about this one, mostly because if I could, if I could just oversimplify it a little bit, this is where we're going to start to see some, some, a few little hints of the Apple intelligence coming out. Another great article from Mac Rumors you linked to about 15 new things that your phone will be able to do when iOS 18.1 comes out. And I got to tell you, I, I just looking through this got me even a little bit more excited today. Yeah. And it's going to be this month, by the way. I mean, Apple has made that clear that the first Apple intelligence, which means 18.1, is going to be out in October. They've announced that in their commercials yeah. and everything else. So we do know it's going to come out this month. Now, maybe it's going to be October 31st. I don't know. <laughs> but we can definitely start to get ready Please. for it because it's going to be here soon. Like you say, right. the, they're, they're the big things um well before getting to it because you happen to just scroll by it one of the things yeah. when, when you and i were talking to each other earlier this yes. week um, i was showing you the camera control button and you asked me oh can you can you also take it can you you switch it to the self to the selfie mode when right. you're using the camera control button and what i told you was well today you can't but it's coming soon and sure it's enough coming. as you're showing right here on the screen that's coming at 18.1 so within a few weeks if you if you um, press the camera button to open up the camera app on your phone you'll then be able to use your finger to switch to the um uh, to, to take a selfie um otherwise though it, i think the big changes are going to be a lot of these um artificial intelligence things yes. and this is where you know i have some personal biases here a lot <laughs> okay. of the ai that Apple is coming out with at first, of course, they're gonna do the low hanging fruit. And so almost by definition, it's the stuff that doesn't interest me that much. You know, things like summarizing your emails and stuff like that, yeah. I, I just have, I have some suspicions as to how useful that's gonna be. And okay. the okay. writing stuff, I know that it's, it can be helpful. You know, I, I use Grammarly. I mean, I definitely understand the idea of having something okay. that's smart to help you with writing. But the way that Apple, at least from what I've seen, and I haven't tried the beta yet, but from what I have seen of how Apple, like you can take some text and you can click one button to make it more professional and another button to make it more friendly. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm sure it's going to help some people. I don't know that I'm going to use it that much. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I, I will say that maybe once I actually start using it, I'll think it's the best thing since sliced bread, but I do have some questions about that. <laughs> um, but there are some things that are coming that do interest me. One of them is this creating a memory movie from a short description where you basically oh. use the photos app. And yeah. instead of saying, you know, I have like a trip that I create a memory movie from or something like that, you can actually describe something like, you know, my kids and I, or maybe you have to actually name some specific people, you know, Joe and Mary and I in the snow over the years or something like yeah. that. And yes. then it can right. say, okay, I know who those people are. 
I know what snow is. I understand over the years means it's not just one time period, but, you know, and so it will then use your description to create a little memory movie. I think that could be really fun and powerful. And I look forward to people coming up with really cool um, yeah. sentences that they use to create a memory movie that I'm like, oh, I might want to modify that and use that myself. And so yeah, that's one of them. That's exactly. The What's a good prompt? Good. And then the other one that's coming. And again, I know this is something that we've had in Photoshop for years and years and years and years, but it can be very useful. Sometimes you take that photo and you didn't even realize when you took the photo that somebody is in the background. In fact, literally, Brett, I saw this the other day. So when when you left New Orleans, the, one of the last things we did, we're saying goodbye, is your wife took a picture of you and me together. Yep. And then I looked at that yep. picture afterwards and there was somebody just to the right of us that was getting into an elevator. I mean, oh, not that really? it's distracting, but it just occurred yeah. to me, you know, what I could do is use this feature Take of the 18.1 just to sort of uh, use my uh, finger and cover up that person and have them out of the photo so that it's just you and me in the now you can debate oh, is that it. right I is that changing yeah picture. you see what i'm talking about because i sent you the picture <laughs> i texted it to you you know is it really that distraction to have a person on the side probably not and am i altering reality nice. by removing that person you know who knows you, the, you you can make your own decision but this very simple and we used to always call this photoshop you would photoshop somebody out of the picture right. you no longer are going to need Right. a sophisticated program like Photoshop to do this just within your iPhone you'll be able to use the photos app say this yeah. little thing on the side get them out of there and you know yeah. we're standing in front of we're at the beach <laughs> and there's a beautiful picture of you and your wife on the sand at the beach but there's this right. one guy that happened to be in the water doing something goofy in the background just get rid of him right. you know get rid of him I yeah. think that's going to be something so <laughs> those are two parts of of Apple intelligence that I think are going to be pretty useful, at least for me. And, you know, other people are going to like some of the other features. But this is, again, really just getting our toe in the water because 18.1 yeah. is going to have the first round of Apple intelligence. And then before the end of the year, I'm guessing we're going to get 18.2 with even more interesting things. For example, right. the one feature that I'm really looking forward to, and I don't know if this will be in point two or another one, is the one that's in one of the Apple commercials where you can ask your phone a question and because your phone uh -huh. understands what's in your emails and your messages and your contacts and your calendar, it will be able to say something, you know, the example in the commercial they have is, you know, who is this person that I had dinner with at, when we were at such and such a restaurant? Right. And it could say, oh, right. that's John. That's, because three, yeah. you know, three and a half years ago, you and John had dinner together at Commander's Palace and like, oh yeah, okay, that's who that is. So um, that that's a and feature that's say, even more sophisticated. John, like you, like you knew exactly. exactly oh, how was. can you forget John? Exactly. <laughs> uh, so that's coming in the future. You know, we're going to have more more and more sophisticated Apple intelligence, i.e. AI features in the future. 18.1 is just going to be the first step. Um, yeah, some of it, yeah. not that exciting, but some of it could be interesting. And the nice things is we're going to have it in our hands this month, you know, pretty soon. Yeah, I find it interesting that the two things you zoned in on were like had to do with the photos and the, and the memories, which which I completely agree with you. But I, I got to tell you, maybe maybe I am a little bit more, slightly more excited or Good. anxious to see some of this summarization tools. I guess is the mm -hmm. way that I kind of <laughs> aggregate them all together. Uh, I I agree with you though. I have a little bit of hesitation. Like I want to see exactly how it works, and I feel like. Even today with some of the other AI summarization tools, Jeff, that I've been involved in with Copilot or, you know, anything else, I feel like I'm still hesitant. Like, this is a great summary, but I want to make sure that the summary is accurate. So how do I do that? That's my I have issue. to go read the entire article at that point. So it's like I don't trust it yet, right? I think that's where mm -hmm. sort of this balance are. And, again, I've used several other tools to do this summarization. And so I'm interested to see if Apple intelligence is any better, any different, how it goes. Uh, so, some of the things in here is about rewriting your text, just like you were talking about. If it's a friendly mode or professional mode, summarizing long emails. I kind of like that. Like people sometimes send long emails and I, and I, I sometimes I have to set a time aside <laughs> to actually go through, read all the details and everything. I just want to see like, is this good, bad? Is it something I need to act on right now? So let me, inter let me interrupt right there before yeah, you move yeah, on. Yeah, go. That particular feature, I guess for some type of emails, sure. If it's something not that important. Some types, but you exactly. know, one of the things they drill into your head yeah. in law school, I mean, you know this too, is that, you know, Somebody might give you a fact pattern. And, and again, I'm talking like a lawyer here, but someone may give you like, here's <laughs> seven sentences. And right. the first six sentences may say all these things. And then in the seventh sentence, there's this one little yep. detail that you're like, oh, well, that's 
going to change everything. That changes and, the you know, whole thing, right? As, yeah. as a lawyer, we're sort of taught to you got to consider all those facts. My fear, right. my fear is that a a AI service, a generative AI service like ChatGPT mm, or Apple's intelligence yeah. is going to say, oh, well, since six out of the seven sentences are talking yeah. about the rain in Spain, my summary is just to talk about the rain in Spain. And let's exactly. leave out the part at the exactly. bottom where the person says, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. be in Spain. I'm going to be in <laughs> France, which is the most important detail. So this is my fear is that if you don't read the email, you miss important details. But again, mm. if it's summarizing an email that's not from a client to an attorney, but if it's summarizing right. an email right. from a vendor or something like that, maybe True. maybe then I'm like, okay, the gist okay. of it is enough. But that that's, that's my trepidation. We shall see. That's an excellent point. Another one quickly, summarize multiple message notifications. I, I like that. You know, since I was in New Orleans, I've been sort of on vacation mode. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a ton of notifications. And I'm like, do I have to scroll through everything? So I like that. And the last one, I got to be honest with you, I, I'm excited about this, is summarizing web articles <laughs> there's so i i don't know why that to me just excites me more i feel like we kind of have that now there's other services that you can even use right now but it yeah. can be built in to the reader mode so you, in, in a web page you go into reader mode so sometimes these long you know i'm thinking like federico vicici you know review or some kind which again i love reading the entire thing because i like to see all the little details but in some aspects i like maybe to start with a quick summary so anyway i am excited to see how some of these summarization i'm not saying that I'm, you know, completely bought in yet, but obviously everything a lot along these lines is like, wait to see how it's going to be. But I am a little bit excited. But anyway, thanks for linking to that. I know we're waiting for iOS 18.1 to get out and uh, hopefully it'll be soon. And when it does, I know you will be using it on your brand new iPhone 16 <laughs> Pro Max, which I know you had to wipe dro my drool off of your watch. You also had to wipe <laughs> it off of your iPhone 16 Pro Max. It was beautiful, but you came out with your full review this past week, Jeff, and it is great. I mean, obviously, I knew it was going to be pretty good just the way you've been talking about it, but as you are prone to do, you did great comparisons of like some of the pictures and the zoomed in pictures on how it c compares with the old version of that. Anyway, great stuff overall on the 16 Pro Max review here. Two things I'm going to point out. One is I started off talking about the slightly larger screen on the Pro models, which was right. significant to me mainly because when you look through, I mean, I, I sort of went back to the beginnings of the iPhone. And when you look over history, <clears throat> it's not that often that Apple changes screen size. You know, it happens every couple of years. Yeah, and so it's it's point. significant. Yeah. It's, it's one of the things. And, and over time, it adds up. I mean, anytime if you find an original <laughs> iPhone does. or an iPhone 4 or 5 and somebody uses one of those, you look at it and you almost you're laugh because like, you're like, right. how could that be? You know, that thing right. is so tiny compared to what we use today. Um, but, but it does sort of slowly change over time. So <laughs> for people that like seeing more things on the screen, it's the biggest one yet, and that's significant. Um, so it's worth talking about. And I also love the fact that it's got fantastic battery life. But the real fun yeah. thing to talk about with the new iPhones, and this is true for all of the models, whether you get the Pro or the non-Pro, the big one, the regular right. size one, is camera control. Yes. And it's um, it's a lot of fun. I have been enjoying using it more and more. And in fact, one of the things that I mentioned um, in, the, in the news post today is there's a uh, podcast um, that I linked to, which was called the Design Tangents Podcast, which wasn't a podcast oh, yeah. I was familiar with before. Yeah. It was linked to by John Gruber. And they interviewed these two people from Apple, uh, Johnny Manzeri and Rich Ding. When I wrote this last night, I said that I haven't read it yet. I actually I, did, I haven't listened to it yet. I actually listened to it this morning when I was getting ready for work and on my way into work. And it's a fun podcast oh, because these people work in Apple Interface. In fact, one of them has been working on the camera for the iPhone since the very first iPhone. And when they were talking about the camera control button, wow. you know, I was thinking of it as let's add a button to the phone. But what they said is where they actually came at it from, the original question was, what can we do to reduce the time that it takes to take a picture so that you don't miss those special oh. moments? And they talked about like way back when, before the iPhone and stuff like that, it used to be that if you were going to take pictures at like a family event or something, you would have your camera. Maybe it was a fancy SLR camera. Maybe it was a snap and right. shoot. but. Pictures were often like, okay, everybody get together, 
Now let's all, it's sort of that this mentality of the days of film where you would only have, you know, 12 or 24 pictures. So every picture was special and you would actually have this, you know, intentionality to taking a pictures, which is good. You get some good pictures that way. But what's even more fun is when you have the sort of candid shots or just the, you just take a picture because something's happening. And, you know, with the old days of, you know, the big phone, it would sort of take a while to get set up and get the light on right. and everything and get everything right. ready to take the picture. And what, the, what they said their goal was to reduce the time from, you sensing this could be a camera worthy movement because my son or my oh. daughter is doing something cute to right, taking the right. picture. And so with that goal in mind, that's what led them to the camera control because it was like the fastest thing would be if you could just pick up your camera with, a, you know, with one hand, you're, you're pressing this button and you're instantly taking the picture. And I thought that was sort of interesting is, you know, what's, how did they, how did they come at it? How did they get there? But they also pointed out that like, they didn't want to have something obnoxious. They wanted you to, if you're just holding your phone, not taking a picture, they don't want right. to have some big obnoxious button that's getting in the way. And so they said they worked really hard that even though it's like different materials, um, you know, it feels very smooth as you put your finger on the side of it. It's not obnoxious to have the camera control there or anything else. Um, that was one feature. Another thing they mentioned is that when you, you know, you can you press down once and it launches the camera, as I've just done. And then you um, you can either push a tiny bit to control like, what am I gonna set? Am I gonna change my cameras? Right. We talked about this last week. Am I gonna change my aperture and stuff like that? And then you press right. the big way to take a picture. They pointed out that both times, even though haptics are involved the first time, it actually is sensing you pressing the button down. Um, I'm not, let me think about how to describe this. I was trying to describe, in fact, I was describing it to you when you and I were, were sitting together. Yep, What's the difference I between remember. taking a picture and getting into the mode where you change the um, go from changing the right. zoom to changing something else. And I was at the time I was saying, well, for the, when you're just changing modes, you don't actually press it. It's just sort of haptic. But what they said on the podcast is actually it does. Pr it, it is actually a physical press, but just like a micron. It's the tiniest of presses <laughs> that's sensed. And once they said that, I'm like, that makes sense because I've been playing around with it this morning oh. before our podcast. Um, it's like pressing the tiniest, tiniest amount to get into that that mode changing mode and then a more substantial okay. press to actually take the picture. But anyway, that's just getting into the nitty gritty details. The big picture and what's exciting is that it is, it does accomplish the goal that they set out. It is a faster way to go from, I want to take a picture to, I have taken a picture. Um, and that's really nice. And then as a secondary thing, the idea that you can change modes while you're still having your camera in that take a picture mode um, yeah. so that you don't have to take it away from like. your face and hold it again. That's really like, right. I like, and I've, I've enjoyed it more and more. So the camera control, it totally changes your mindset. In fact, you told me this week and you were so right that because I'm used to taking pictures with my iPhone the other way, because <laughs> I used to press the volume up button where volume, to take a right. picture, which meant that right. the cameras were down here at the bottom of the phone. Right. But nowadays with so, the camera control, my phone is flipped. <laughs> So the cameras yeah. are at the top, and if so I'm not can't. careful, my fingers <laughs> are in the lens, the lens and I take these pictures right. where you can see that. So I need to get muscle memory of no, no, no. <laughs> take you know, don't put your fingers in front of the lenses. Take them away. So, but I'm learning, and you know, two weeks in, I'm getting better at it. But I have no doubt that you know, once I completely internalize these features, this is an improvement. So you, if you have an iPhone 16 this year, you're taking advantage of it. If you're not going to upgrade this year, at some point in the future, you will upgrade and then you'll have yeah. the camera control button. And it really, it it does it does what, what you want it to do. It makes it faster to take pictures, which means that you capture those special moments, whether it's a photo or whether it's a video, because you can just hold down and start instantly taking video. And it, it makes a difference. It really is nice. I'm going to call it, you have to do the the, the pinky lift if you, <laughs> you <have laughs> exactly. like, raise your all your fingers on there. You know, just real quick, I, I find that fascinating. Like that's the reason they came to the camera button because I can only imagine, Jeff, we talked about this, that there had to be internal arguments in Apple that people would say, why would you add another button when we've got multiple ways that you can quickly get to the camera, right? You've got the camera button on the lock screen. You can just simply swipe right to left on the lock screen and the camera comes up. And I can only imagine that they would argue internally, like there's already easy ways to get to the camera. But just even doing it, you know, as you said, you were very, so kind to let me touch your camera. Just even <laughs> using it for just a minute, I could just tell, oh, yeah, oh, to to totally easy. And actually, I remember asking about the selfie button 
because as my wife and I were walking around New Orleans, I would have to do exactly what we talked about. I would go into the camera mode, then I had to pull the camera down, tap the little like camera. I want the front face to flip it right the back. Mm -hmm. So I had to like get it down, tap the button, make sure it was correct. And then I, I raise it up again. And it's like if I just had the ability to just simply tap it with my finger and then I could get into that selfie mode, that would be so great. And then I could capture it so much quicker. So now I, I'm so glad you mentioned that that podcast and I can't wait to listen to it as well because I just I'm I'm so glad that they understand and realize this is an eye camera <laughs> that can make some phone calls as well. And it's really mm -hmm. cool that um mm -hmm. anything else you want to highlight in your review? I mean it's so good and I know people can just read through no, it. No, I think that's it. The camera control was a really exciting thing for me. Yeah. Well, you continue to stay upgraded to the iPhone Pro Max. And one of our favorite writers about Macs and iPhones decided I'm going to downgrade <laughs> this year. It was actually fun. I love this little story because this is Federico Vicici at Mac Stories. He always gets the Pro Max version. And apparently he got it this year as well. But then it just is interesting to see how he writes about this. He thought, maybe, maybe I could be happy with the non-pro version of the iPhone this year. And it seems mm -hmm. like he's continuing to be happy with that little, I call it a downgrade. He may not call it that, but I do. And But I'm, I'm just so glad that a downgrade is an upgrade for him, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, read his article for all of his reasons, but I think the two big ones is, first of all, he likes the case. You know, the, the pro cases are always sort of boring colors. I have the one that's sort of black, there's one that's white. But if you want the vibrant colors, such as the, um, the, the that vibrant blue that he has on this year's phone, you have to get the non-pro models to get the fun colors. So that's yeah. one advantage. But the other thing that he noted is, and I and I yeah. and I mentioned this a few minutes ago, that Apple does not often increase the size of its um, devices, but uh, the iPhone 16 Pro Max, it's the biggest iPhone that Apple's ever released. And right. Federici said for him, it might be a little too big. And so if you get the iPhone 16 Plus, it's still the larger size, but it's just not quite as large as the Pro Max. Right. And that little difference, I can definitely understand. I mean, for me, I, I was worried about that too. And I think that this is an okay size for me, but I will tell you, Brett, and we'll see if I eat my words in future years. I don't think I would want to get much bigger than this with a phone in my hand. So if Apple does three years mm, from okay. now, make the iPhone bigger still, I might do right. the same thing in Federici, maybe not switch from the pro to the non-pro, but I might switch from the max to the non-max just to just to get it down a little bit. So I do understand his reasonings on that. And and obviously it's 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 all for him. Now, for me, yeah. I again the the camera being so important, which is why you joke and call it the iCamera instead of the iPhone. Um, I love that 5X telephoto. I really I I, I loved yeah. it last year. It was the you're, reason you're that I got good. the Pro Max. Yeah. I love it this yeah. year. It's I mean, you truly take substantially different pictures. Um, when you have the 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 the, the, the zoom thing, and um, so I would not want to give that up. And so for that reason alone, that would be a reason for me not to do the switch. Um, and there's some other advantages too. It's a nicer camera, nicer video, and stuff like that with the yeah. Pro models. So, um, but to each his own. And you know, the fact that a really pro user like Federico Vitici of Mac of Stories, mm -hmm. for him to say that actually the non-pro model is right for me, I think that just proves that for everybody, you know. It, it, maybe the non-pro model is right for you too. And maybe the max is right for you. Maybe the non-max is right for you. You just have to decide. There really is a reason yeah. that Apple has four different options. You, you don't know which one of those you're going to be. And you might consider yourself, I'm an uber geek when it comes to the iPhone, or maybe you consider yourself, I know nothing when it comes to the iPhone, but that doesn't necessarily yeah. answer the question of which model you should get. Uh, I, as usually as I am prone to do, I say, go to the Apple store and look at them. I mean, that's, what's yeah. great about an actual Apple store is that you can pick them up. You can touch them. You can see how heavy I'm like, I was so surprised how light your, we talked pro about that Max yeah. was Jeff. Like mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was, it was, it's lighter than my pro regular 15 pro anyway just picking them up and and touching them and flipping them around is great and i do like the fact that <laughs> he talks about frederico has some very colorful tattoos on his hand and he <laughs> likes that the color of the iphone regular is so beautiful compared with his color tattoos on there you gotta the match your quickly, tattoos yeah i know i exactly and the last thing i would just quickly say this is one of my i call it a complaint but it was just more of an observation there really isn't a whole lot of differences between the 16 
regular and the pro models. I mean, again, I know the camera. I know, you know, some of the processing. Mm -hmm. But it's like they both have the camera control. They both have the action button now. From a hardware perspective, it's very, very minimal differences. So I can certainly see where he came down uh, to go to the, the, the regular model there, which I thought was, uh, was great. Uh, another thing quickly, let's go to the vision just real quickly, because there was an app that you have talked about over and over called Juno, which is a way that you can watch YouTube videos because YouTube doesn't actually have an app for your vision pro. And I hope that if people have a vision pro, they were able to download it <laughs> because Juno is no mo right now, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this is a bigger story, even if you don't have a vision pro, um, as I noted, this developer, you know, this is the second time this has happened to him. He made an app called Apollo, which people loved, which was yes, a Reddit client. It was a better that. way yeah. to use Reddit. And then Reddit decided, you know what, we're going to, we're going to make it, we're going to charge you as a developer so much to, to use this app that it basically would charge out of existence so he had to shut yeah. down the apollo app and so now this is juno you know if you have an apple vision pro watching videos on it is a very big use of an apple vision pro but if you want to watch a youtube video you have to do it within a web browser which works it's fine but it's not ideal you know you what you really want is you know no borders and you know you, you, a native app is we all know that native apps can be better for viewing content better. than a web browser right. and so it makes sense to have a native app juno did it and you know he did it what i in a way that i thought was very fair to YouTube because he didn't strip out the the advertisements. He didn't do anything else. It it, it oh, you okay. saw every you know all of your collections in YouTube. You saw in the Juno app. It was basically just like as if YouTube itself had made a native app. This is what they would do. And um, but unfortunately, YouTube mm -hmm. told him that you know you know they or not told him they told Apple you know this this infringes on us. And I wouldn't have a problem with this, Brett, if they had their own app. You know, I remember back in the day. I, yeah. Um, there used to be a third party app for using Facebook. The name of it is oh gosh, it's slipping my mind, but it was a more oh, I never sleek what you're talking. It yeah. was a more yeah. sleek interface for Facebook and Facebook said, "You know what? We have our own app on the iPhone. We don't want, you know, another app." So that's fine. Actually, now that Ooh. I'm saying that out loud, Facebook itself actually, I think purchased it and they were actually selling it as an alternative way to do Facebook, but then they just had their one app. But if okay. YouTube okay. had a native app for the Apple Vision Pro, then I wouldn't have a problem with this because then you can use the YouTube app. Now, if it was missing features that Juno had, that would make me upset. But, you know, I really like Juno. For example, just one week ago, I was talking about how you could view immersive 360 degree video. Yeah, you, can't, right. you can't do that currently with the web browser. And so now that Juno is off, you know, I still have it installed so I can continue to use it. But if somebody was to yeah. get an Apple Vision Pro yeah. tomorrow, but again, I know so few people have Apple Vision Pros. I don't want to focus on that. The, the real focus is that when you have these big companies and then I have a small developer that says, yeah. I have a better mousetrap. Like, come better. on, if are they really infringing upon your profits and your individuality? You know, why not let people, you know, use your platforms in different yeah. ways? Um, I really don't see how YouTube was harmed by this. I wish they had not made this decision. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I feel product. like they can either provide guidelines to say, if you're going to create independent apps, here's what you have to follow. Just sure. exactly what you were saying. Make sure the ads are there. Make sure you're not stripping everything out. I, I feel like they could either do that or instead of just shutting them down, just buy them out. <laughs> like yeah, give this yeah. developer something that like, you know, for the all the work that they put in. And then either, you know, I mean, at that point, they would probably kill the app, which would make me sad as well. But it's like, come on, like, don't just go around, you know, do an in run around, like go to the Apple and say, shut it down. I mean, I, like these are people that are passionate about your services, right? He wouldn't make Juno for YouTube if he wasn't passionate about getting people access to this. So yeah, it just makes me and I remember Apollo. Apollo was an excellent, excellent app. And it just really infuriated me even back then. Uh, but anyway, at least uh, at least you have Juno. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can, Jeff. <laughs> That's a good thing. Okay, let's talk about AirPods quickly. Uh, not just simply another review. I thought this was an excellent article from Macworld by John Moltz, where he's literally talking about, I've heard this many times from people, the AirPods Pro just don't seem to fit their ears uh, exactly. Like, in other words, they have problems with it falling out. They've tried the small, the medium, the large little, um, uh, you know, the the adapters on there and nothing really seems to work. And I thought John does a great job here in this article of just saying, hey, maybe try the regular AirPods then because we recognize that not all ears are the same. I uh, just thought this was a good angle that he brought to it. Yeah. When Apple came out with the new AirPods 4 this year, one of the things that they actually talked about was the fact that they studied lots of different people's ears and ear shapes 
And they, it's it's a subtle change, but it is a change. Right. The shape of the AirPod 4 is different from the AirPod 3, and Apple was trying to make them more universally acceptable. And of course, there's not going to be any one size, you know, no one size fits yeah. all, as they say. And so likewise, right. even though Apple tries to make the every AirPod more um, accessible to as many people as possible, it's not going to always be right for everybody. In fact, even for me, myself, uh, Brad, I use the AirPods Pro every day. I love them. I'm wearing them right now to listen to your voice. But I don't use the silicone tips that Apple provides with them. Yeah. I'm, I use like these foam tips that I've purchased from a company for years. I've written about it before on iPhone JD. Yeah. I just find right. that makes it more comfortable for me. I'm glad that I have that option to customize it. But what if I didn't have that option? What if the only ear tips I could use were the silicone ones that made by Apple? Would I continue to say that AirPods Pro were perfect? Or maybe I would be interested, you know, so just if if you have used AirPods in the past and they, they don't feel quite right to you, and if the AirPod Pro doesn't feel quite right to you, um, you might want to try a pair. Um, you know, one of the things, another post I had this week, by the way, Brett, was that you can try before you buy at Apple and that Apple has a very yeah. generous return policy. <laughs> but this might be an example of it with an AirPod. If you buy the AirPod 4, you have two weeks to try it out and to see if it works for your ear. If it doesn't, then return it. But it might be the best overall AirPod for you. So you never know until you try it. Yeah, here's your Comply Foam Apple AirPods earbud tips. Is, is this the same company you're still using? This yep, Comply? that's it. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, this was great. In fact, my wife has, has said the same thing about the AirPods Pro, and she tried these. I don't know if she kept the foam, the the Comply foams. Anyway, but she liked it because she, she was like, well, Jeff Richardson re suggested them. <laughs> this is a good one to try because she had the issues that were falling out. And, and you know, by the way, I, I, I meant to talk about that quickly, and I just w would love to um, – uh, uh, mentioned that you wrote about the, your Apple Watch, uh, how should we say, it, your return saga, <laughs> the the generous 14-day return policy. Um, I just want to highlight this story quickly that you wrote about because I remember talking to you over these last couple of months as you were waiting for the new Apple Watch to come out, and you kept trying different versions of the Apple Watch and then returning them after. Now, I realize mm -hmm. you've already got comments from people saying, hey, this doesn't seem like it's only the total up and up, but obviously I followed you in this journey over the last couple of months, and it was perfectly fine because it's not like you tried to like get more money back. You brought everything back exactly the way it was meant to be, and we have often talked about this, that Apple has this 14-day return policy, no questions asked, and it's just great that you did a great job of kind of reviewing all of your personal experience and exactly what happened. And I think it's good just to highlight this because I tell people all the time, they say, well, I don't know if I want the small iPad or the big iPad, and I'm like, well, go and get one. As long as you make mm -hmm. sure you return everything in pristine condition with all the cables and everything, Apple will take it back and then you can get the other one if you wanted to. So I'm glad you wrote about this. And, and it's particularly true this year for the Apple Watch because Apple is selling two excellent Apple Watches right now. The Apple Watch Series 10 that I have is a great watch. Yeah. The Apple Watch Ultra, which you have, is a great watch. And whether the Ultra 2 or the Watch 10 is best for you, I can't really tell you that. You know, you might need to try. You might need to try the Ultra like I did yeah. to say, you know what, yeah. it's a little too big. Or maybe you think it's not too big and it's perfect for you and then you have the great battery life. Or maybe you try the Series 10 and say, that's the right size for me. So this is a time where I don't know how to give someone advice on whether the Ultra or the Series 10 is best for them. Right. So you might want to sort of go with your gut, get the one that you think you like, and if you if you change your mind within the first week or so, it's okay. You can bring it back you and you can get back. the other one. So you call it Apple's generous 14 day return policy. Apparently one of the Apple employees told you that they it's known as the unofficial <laughs> Apple loan program. I thought that was so funny when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Quickly, let's go back to the Apple AirPods and another where are you at segment. We talked about the where are you at with the hurricane, but this was a little bit more on the funny side. If you have AirPods, make sure that you put make sure you put them in the console of your Ferrari. <laughs> because it could just happen that that's the way that the police can find your Ferrari when it gets stolen. I thought this was great. Like, it wasn't just air tags this time. They were able to track down a stolen Ferrari. <laughs> Where is this in Connecticut? Because their AirPods were in the console of the of the Ferrari, which I just think yeah. is great. 
I think this is the second time this year that you and I have talked about a story where it Probably. wasn't an air <laughs> it wasn't an air tag in the car, which is what you would assume, right? Uh, it wasn't an air tag that they tracked it yeah. down. It was someone's right. AirPods that happened to be in the car. And of course, if my car was a you know a Ferrari that cost over half a million dollars. Which, by the way, Brett, my car will never be a Ferrari yeah. that costs over never. half a million dollars. Yeah. But if it was, right. if it was, if, uh, I would probably yeah. have two air tags in there, maybe three. <laughs> uh, certainly would not be you, uh, relying you could upon spend my air Twenty nine, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I'll get the four pack from Amazon and put all four of them in there in four different corners of the car. But yeah, but it's great that the, they were the police were able to track it down. And then it's just sort of like a little twist of Appleness to it: the fact yes. that the bad guy jumps out of the car. And leaves his iPhone in there, and so that's how they're able to confirm who he was. So he <laughs> sort of got double. He down. got double hit by Apple. You know, not only was he tracked using Find My, but he also was was they figured out who he was. Oh man! So that Too was funny. funny. Hey, while we're talking about sort of where you at stories, yeah. can I have another follow up here? Which Please. was again when you and I were talking on Wednesday night, I was mentioning to you that um, my Find My wasn't working on my iPhone in that I could oh, see yes. other members of my family, right. but when my wife was trying to but see where right. I was, yeah. it wasn't working. And I found the solution. Um, I had yes. did every setting and everything else, but what it turned out is what I had to do was I had to go into iCloud on my iPhone, uh -huh. log out of iCloud, which gives you all these warning oh, messages about logging out of it iCloud, does. It does. then log yeah. back in, and logging back in, like logging out and logging in at iCloud is a little bit of a pain because you've got to re-put yes, in your credit card for Apple Pay. you got to reset up a few things. It didn't take me that long, but it does. it's a little bit of a pain. But that process of logging out of iCloud and then logging back in again fixed my Find My, my Find yeah. My. And so now if my wife wants to know where I am, she can find me. If I want to know where yeah, she is, I can yeah. find her. So that was a solution. But that's just, you know, it was one of the last things I thought of. And sure enough, that was that was the fix. So, you know, I I thought about that when we were talking about this, because I think I was telling you to like uh, turn off Find My and turn it back on. But I know <laughs> that probably the next step you would have to do was to like log out of iCloud and log back in. I've that done that maybe twice over the last mm -hmm. few years, Jeff, and I hate it. I hate it because it yeah. gives you all these warnings and it's like i don't i don't i don't want to lose anything like what if it what if something gets screwed up when i log out and i log back in now it's not that bad i understand but it's exactly what you just said i have to like re-enable all of my some of the settings not everything but i have to re-enable some of the settings you do have to add all of your credit cards back into the wallet and it's like i've got everything set up i don't want to do that so i'm glad that it worked out for you i i mean i've done this before i think um I can't remember what it was. There was some kind of a setting that was just so annoying to me on my phone. I, I it couldn't like update the Apple Wallet, something like that. And it's like that was the last ditch effort, and it worked. But I just I hated the, the step of it. Like you said, <laughs> it's just too much of a pain. I, I hate that. Okay, we we need to actually create a let's jump to like Apple let's... TV. Yeah, okay, you want to do that? Well, I'm just saying, you talked about Wolf's, uh, we've talked about this movie with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Apparently, it's the most watched uh, show on Apple TV ever. Uh, that was good, because I always like how you talk about some of these things. And then, thanks to you, I had the most bone-chilling experience this morning watching <laughs> this little trailer from a movie that apparently is coming to Apple TV+. Plus. It's with Billy Crystal. Yay. Happy, fun. I want to laugh out loud. And so you said there was a little warning you put into your little mention here. And I'm like, okay, well, it can't be that bad. It's Billy Crystal. And I got so scared watching this trailer. <laughs> the movie is called Before. And it's like a Billy Crystal I have never seen before. And I'm not even sure that I really want to. He does not meet Sally in this one. And it is, no. does not go well. <laughs> <laughs> very, very serious. By the way, it's not a movie. It's a limited series. So I think it's going to be like an oh, eight okay, episode okay, okay, sort of okay. limited show, but I think just something of one season. But yeah, it's 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 always interesting when you see an actor that you know 100% for a dramatic <sighs> role and suddenly they're in a comedy or vice versa when you know somebody really just oh, as a comedic oh, actor oh, and then they oh. show up in a very serious role. That almost makes it even more bone chilling than it would have been otherwise. I so I look forward to this one. I think this one exactly. comes out next month, next month, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it had that. Oh, uh, October 25th. Premieres October 25th. Yeah, so that's the end. Hopefully Great. we'll have 18.1 by then. But <laughs> and you can watch it. You can you can watch it on your Vision Pro, Jeff, and you can there see you how go. it goes <laughs> on that. All right, in the know. In the uh, know. As I said, I am still finding out every little tiny detail of iOS 18. And one of the main things, and I was just doing this this past week because we were in New Orleans, we're taking a bunch of pictures of all kinds of stuff. And... I usually also do several screenshots on my phone. Typically, it's because it's like a sign or 
uh, you know, I, if I'm doing like I, I have a receipt on my phone, right? I go to Starbucks and I get a receipt. I'll take a screenshot of that just so that I have it for later if I need to upload it, you know, for business expense or something. Or there's sometimes that I, I'm just on a, on a website and I wanted to capture something. So I've got a ton of screenshots in all of my other photos. Well, in iOS 18 now, because this Photos app is quite different, I'm still getting used to it all around. But if you scroll into your photos and scroll down just a little bit, at the very bottom, you'll have this little circle in the bottom left corner that has an arrow going up and an arrow going down, which is a little of an odd button, I think, but if you can think of it as, how do I want to sort my photos? And this is similar in the Files app, they have something similar. But if you tap that little up and down arrow, there is a way you can sort by recently added, or you can sort by date captured. That's great, that's always kind of been there. But if you go down to something called view options, if you go there, there are two things at the bottom. You can show or elect not to show screenshots or photos that are shared with you. Now, I typically like to see the photos shared with me, but many times mm -hmm. in my photo roll, I still call it my photo roll, I don't wanna see all those screenshots that I have. So you can just tap that, uncheck screenshots and voila all those screenshots are still there you just do not see them in the mix of all of your other photos because a lot of times it'll just kind of get me off i'm like why why is that i know i there was a reason that i took a screenshot of that web page or that receipt or something on the screen but i don't want to see that with my other happy photos of my kids or my wife and i as were you know eating a lot of oysters in new orleans and so it's like i could just quickly just tag that off and you can just simply tap on that up and down arrow again and you can toggle the screenshots back on if you want to see them or i guess you could just create a photo album of them as well right so that you could just go to a specific photo album and you can just see the screenshots there but anyway that's my little tip today i'm finding out these little tiny differences in here that really can make a big difference i am starting to the photos app is growing on me very well i have to say i'm enjoying it um i just feel like a little lost sometimes because i'm like well that's not what i normally see there but i know there's ways that i can customize it and i'm just kind of learning a little bit more as we go along yeah great tip and that's what i wanted to sort of build off of today i mean i agree with you i think oh, of good. screenshots as a different type of, that's more of a technical thing that I'm using Ooh, for yeah. something versus a photograph, which is like a memory of something. And my mind does think of them separately. You just mentioned at the end there, you could create a special folder for screenshots. You actually yeah. don't have to create it. It's already there. The oh, iPhone already there. has, oh. when, when you look on your iPhone under the, um, all the different things you can do in photos, one of them is called media types. And one of the media types is screenshots. Oh, is. And you can like move it to the top. So it's Ooh. one of your first ones. But so you already have like, when you wanna see the screenshots, Go and see the it's screenshots, there. but you don't want it to be mucking up your regular photos. So what I want to Good talk heavens. about is, you know, yeah. with the new photos app, when you first open up the app on your iPhone or your iPad, but let's just talk about the iPhone for right now. You know, the top two thirds of your screen are the are recent photos, but then the bottom third of the screen. And as you scroll, that's when you start to see like things that are sort of put together into collections and stuff. And uh -huh. my recommendation is that you reorder these collections. The way that you do this oh, is scroll, scroll, yes. scroll, scroll, Thank scroll until you. you get to the very bottom. And when you get right. to the very bottom, you'll see a button that says customize and reorder. And then I you can that. decide what order do you want things and which ones do you want to show first and second and third? Ooh, so, for example, yes, the first, I think by default, when you first update up to iOS 18, the first one is going to have, I think it's called previous days or something like that. Re and it recent days. Yeah, recent, recent days. days. And it organizes, you know, here's all the pictures from yesterday. Here's the mm -hmm. pictures from two days ago. Here's the pictures from five days ago. And at first I thought that makes some sense, but I have found after using it for a couple of weeks that when I want to see recent photos, I just scroll up in that the top of the screen. I mean, I just see them right there. So right, um, they're right there. I, don't, exactly. I don't really need to have that right there. So I've taken that off. But I do often, when I open up my photos app, I do often want to jump into, I'm looking for a picture of my daughter or something like that. And so I have as my first one, the people, it's called peoples and pets. Uh -huh. I have that first because it's one that I'm likely to get to. So that's, and then the next one that I have, and you can control the order of this, are the pin collections. And pin collections uh -huh. is sort of its own little subset within a subset because pin collections is also something that you can modify. There's a button right next to it that says modify. Uh, and if you go there, that, you'll yeah. see what do you want your pins collections to be? Do you want it to be your map? Ooh, I use that one a lot okay. to find something by location. Do I want it to be trips? I like that one because you can like quickly get to a trip you took in the last year or two. Another one that's there by default 
but which I took out is called favorites. Now, I don't know how you use I your favorites, that. Brett. Some yeah. people, every time they have a picture they love, they put it in a favorite. And if you use favorites that way, well, then sure, you're going to want to have quick access to favorites. For whatever right. reason, I actually haven't done that over the years. What I use the favorites for is sometimes I I need to put a picture on a shelf because I'm going to need access to it in the future. And an example is like, um, you know how sometimes if I'm using a third-party app and it wants me to put a picture of myself as the avatar in the app, I right. have that as a favorite because it's just a way to get quick access to it. When I'm in I that third-party app, yep. instead gotcha. of like scrolling through 10,000 pictures, I can just jump quickly to favorites and then pull it up. Or sometimes I'll be using an app where I know for this app, I'm going to need to have a, a, a photo of, of something that I took of something a while ago. I, I will just use favorites as a way to sort of put it in a special collection so that I can right. yank it out of that collection often when I'm in a third party app. And so I love the favorites feature. It's great for that. But because for me, it's not like my favorite pictures. It's more right. of a utility. I actually don't want it at the top of my pin collections. I very rarely okay. will right. look at favorites within the photos apps. I will add to favorites by, by clicking on the heart, but I'm usually using it. So that's just me personally. But my point is, if you want to have access to your favorites, put it way up at the top. And if you don't want to have easy access, take right. it off completely. And so okay. by the, by, you know, it, it's going to take time to do this, but by customizing which collections are at the top and which are at the bottom. And then within the pin collections, by customizing which specific albums show up there, like in the first couple and which ones right. are further down, you know, you can get to the point where when you open your photos app, you have really quick access exactly. to the things that you want the right. most, exactly. not only the recent right. pictures at the very top, but at the bottom third, you have quick access. So it's one of these things that you change over time. And, you know, there's you, you may – six months from now, you may have a different opinion as to what's more important. But, you know, take advantage of this customization feature. And this is the thing that, for me, changes the new Photos app yeah. from being something that's confusing and, and aggravating to something right. that's really much better. And, and, is, and it's a better Photos app than it ever was before. Yeah, thank you. Because like that's one of the things that I haven't done yet is doing the customized order. I had seen that button way down at the very bottom there, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well, I you know I'll set aside thirty minutes <laughs> at some point to go through. But just that simple, those simple changes there have already changed it, made it like so much more accessible for me. That is lovely. I like that. All right, so it's Photos app. I feel like we're going to continue to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think so. Yeah, there's just so much more. And we t we even knew this coming in, like even several weeks ago, we would talk about the fact that we know that that's going to be something that most people are going to be accessing more, probably more than anything else that messages. And uh, anyway, just thinking about that with the podcast we talked about earlier, where the designers were talking about getting people quicker access to the camera. Um, anyway, just really cool. Like just just exciting where a lot of that is uh, is going there. All right. Woo. Lots of good stuff. Maybe. 18.1 by next week uh probably uh, i don't know could be not. we never know. never know we don't know on this <laughs> regardless of whether it's out or not we're going to talk with you next week thanks jeff thanks brett bye-bye everybody